Hi everybody, this is Laura with Lonely Pines Farm and today we are down by the lake talking about foraging for cottonwood buds. Now cottonwood buds are, as you would suspect, the buds from a cottonwood tree and they are an easy to identify perfect plant for beginner foragers like myself. <laughs> and though this may be our first year foraging for them, I have been soaking up the tips and tricks from all of the experienced foragers out there and I want to share them all with you. <laughs> My hope is that you can feel empowered to go out there and find cottonwoods in your area and enjoy all the wonderful benefits of this plant. Yes, so speaking of benefits, let's start with those. Why on earth would you go out looking for a cottonwood tree? Cottonwood buds are filled with this incredibly sticky, wonderfully scented resin. It can vary from like yellow to red depending on the type of cottonwood tree and it's got a lot of medicinal benefits. Specifically, it's antiseptic, anti-inflammatory, it's an expectorant, and it's stimulating. What does that really mean? Well, it means that you can use it to reduce joint inflammation. You can use it um, to help get mucus flowing. If you have a cold, you can put it on your chest. It's great for dry skin and skin conditions like eczema and psoriasis. It's also great for wound healing, it's great for sunburns, it's great for a lot of skin conditions. In fact, the balm that you make out of this is called Balm of Gilead because the benefits are so wonderful that it's biblical, used, apparently used back in biblical times. Cottonwood also contains a component called salicin, which is the same thing that gives aspirin its pain-fighting abilities. So a lot of people will use this as an anti-inflammatory and a pain-fighting remedy. But we'll get more into the balm and the uses uh, once we talk about how to identify cottonwood trees. Believe it or not, this right here is a cottonwood tree. Woo! It's a big one. And here's my extensive list for all of the different ways that you can identify a cottonwood tree. So first off, let's start with the environment. Cottonwoods love water. They live in what you call a riparian environment. So you usually find them adjacent to lakes. The ones we found up in the woods are next to creeks and streams. So if it's wet, you're in the right environment. Next is the bark. It is a gray colored tree and the bark will have crags in it that run vertically. The branches for this tree start coming out about halfway up the tree. There are other kinds of poplars where you start seeing the branches come out very low. These are about halfway up. Also, when you look up into the tree, you should see a very full canopy. There should be lots of crisscrossing branches. If I step a little farther away here, you can see it is also a very tall tree. We have actually yet to find a short cottonwood tree. It is usually significantly taller than all of the trees that surround it. Now, when we look down on the ground, we are looking for lots of fallen branches. Cottonwoods are known to lose their branches incredibly easily. The branches themselves will be craggly. They'll have lots of these bumps. They call them witch's knuckles. They'll be all over the branches unless the branches are young. We learned that very recently. They will be smooth and green if young, but you should be able to find these in the near vicinity to confirm. You'll see that the buds grow out of the very tip of the branches. Sometimes you'll see some clusterings at the tip as well. If it's the right time of year, you should be able to see some resin on the outside of your buds. Again, it'll be anywhere from like yellow to an orange to a red color. And the last method for identifying is the smell. Cottonwood has a very specific actual kind of cotton candy smell and once you know it, it's unmistakable. So a lot of folks will say, I can't be, you know, 100% sure on the ID unless you smell it. So, mm, cottonwood. Another way that you can use kind of as a backup method is to uh, break or cut the stem. And sometimes they do have a little bit of a star shape inside running up through the middle of the stem, but we haven't found that consistent with every branch we've collected. All of those different ways to identify it should get you pretty darn close to knowing for sure that it's a cottonwood tree. Uh, it doesn't really have any sort of like poisonous lookalikes. The closest would be potentially a mistaken poplar. A cottonwood is a kind of poplar. There are other kinds of poplars. They, you can also do the same things with them. So they just don't have as much medicinal benefits as a cottonwood specifically. But as with any foraging endeavor, I would encourage you to find a local foraging group, maybe on Facebook, that's what we use, and then post your harvest. Triple check your IDs before you consume anything. <laughs> So when it comes to harvesting, I talked a lot about the branches on the ground. You do not pick these buds from the tree. You pick them from the fallen branches. Now I mentioned that sticky resin. It is sticky resin. That is not an understatement. So be aware of whatever container you choose to harvest it into. Uh, alcohol can clean it off, but it is incredibly difficult to do. Um, so I'd use something like maybe a glass jar or a disposable box or something that you don't mind getting sticky icky all over. <laughs> it will also get all over your hands. So you may choose to wear gloves as well. Now when you're gathering them up, it's not uncommon to come across old buds, so pay attention. When you snap them off the branch, is the end of the bud green or is it brown? Is the tip of the branch green or brown? Um, you want the green buds to make sure that they are fresh and still full of resin as opposed to older buds from previous years. If you feel like you don't have enough buds to do anything with yet, these buds freeze really, really well. So you can just pop them in a jar in the freezer and then when you're ready to do something, let them defrost and then move on with your process. 
All right, so we know the benefits of the tree. We've identified the tree. We've gotten all sticky and harvested the buds off the ground. Now what? <laughs> Well, there are three common ways to enjoy cottonwood buds. That would be um, the oil slash salve, honey, or a tincture. We're not gonna get into the specifics of making each one of those. I'm hoping to do those in separate videos as we continue to explore with cottonwoods this year. But by and large, the most popular one is to infuse them in oil, specifically olive oil, maybe mixed with some other oils. There's um, conflicting, some people like to do it over heat, a low heat. Some people have used like the seed warming mats, starting mats. Um, some folks will put them in like a water bath in a crock pot or an instapot on warm for quick infusion. We actually have that going inside in our crock pot. It's been on warm for a couple days now um, and we're just about to drain it out, add in the beeswax, pour it into the tins, and then you make a salve, that, ugh, a salve, <laughs> that balm of Gilead. <laughs> The other option is to do a cold infusion in those same oils. You would basically fill the jar halfway full with buds, fill it to the top with oil, and then forget about it for six months to a year. Some people swear that the cold infusion gives you some better benefits. We're going to try both. We've got the warm going right now, and then when we go out and get our next batch of buds, I'm going to do uh, cold infusions for the next year in a variety of oils to try some stuff out. You don't have to turn it into a salve. You can also just use the oil as is. Um, but again, great for like joint pain and skin and all sorts of good stuff. You can also infuse it in honey, which we'd like to try as well. It has that incredibly delicious smell and I think it would just be wonderful in honey. Uh, it'd be perfect for cold season and kind of those expectorant qualities, those pain fighting qualities. Um, so that's one option as well. And then the last one is a tincture, which I'm not sure if we're going to mess around with this year. Um, you can look up how to make it yourself. I know it involves Everclear and like really concentrated amounts of the cottonwood buds. I would imagine that its best application would be for pain. I mean, that'd be kind of cool if you had a headache and you could take a tincture instead of your Tylenol, right? <laughs> you know, so, um, but anyway, do the research if you want to go da down that route as well. And that's about it. Again, I think this is a perfect way for beginners to get into foraging. It's a great way to kick off the year. The buds are usually available between like January and March. So it's actually kind of towards the end of the season right now. And a bonus is that morels like to grow under cottonwoods, so if you identify the trees now, you're already ahead of the game for mushroom season. Stay tuned, we're going to be talking about foraging for stinging nettles next, because we just did that last weekend. Mwah, so yummy. And I really hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to like and subscribe, and have a great day!